Greetings, Andre here from Double A Rock Shop. It's Sunday, February the 15th, 2009, and I'm here for the final day of the 55th annual Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. Here's a view from up above the auditorium, and I'll pan around to kind of give you a little bit of an idea of the enormity or the scale of the show. Predominantly, the side closest to us is gem and jewelry dealers. But I've noticed this year that a few mineral dealers have snuck over to this side. I don't know if that is a sign of the times, of the economy, or whatever. Maybe there's less jewelry dealers coming to the show this year. But it's nice to see more mineral dealers, at least from my perspective. The, it's uh, quite the show. I'll get downstairs and get some videos of some of the displays that we've got out this year specializing in mineral oddities. So stay tuned and we'll see what I come up with. Here's a case that struck my eye, it's Moroccan oddities. A lot of stalactitic type growths of quartz. Some specimens of quartz replacing barite. Interesting case. Onward. Here's some unusual habits of appetite from Brazil. This one up in front really caught my eye. Somewhat unusual. And a couple more to show. This one in the back corner. As well as a couple over in the far right hand corner. One from my home state of California, borates. Never used the laundry additive Boraxo. Well, here you go. This is your kind of case. Something you don't see very often, crystalline form of borax. I do have one at home in my collection, which I absolutely love. one in this case that really caught my eye, but the idea of where we're looking from, Magdalena District in New Mexico. It's a smithsonite pseudomorphing cerusite from the Kelly mine. Kind of caught my eye. It's probably a good 10, 11 inches across and a good 6 inches wide. Here's a case that contains fibrous minerals. Right up front is the fibrous, and I would pronounce it foitite, on shoral from Minas Gerais and Brazil. The fibrous mineral sits right up on top of the shoral. And here's some fibrous dravite. Here's some specimens from the Denver Museum of Natural History and Science. A few caught my eye. Right in the back here is a kind of an unusual gypsum piece, kind of a circular crust, cluster of uh, crystals. And here's one for my neighbor John, who's into fulgurite, which is as a result of lightning. It's a large cast in the back here. Quite an interesting piece. Of course, they have a piece of rhodochrosite in the Sunnyside mine. Here's an interesting looking halite cast. Kind of cool. Neat stuff. Here's some specimens from Gene Myron's collection. They're all silver. Quite amazing what silver can do. This one definitely caught my eye. Stuff. There's a few specimens in this case I thought I'd show you. It looks like these are all probably from the collection of Victor Yount. A couple of scepter pieces right here. Very interesting scepter. And then scanning back across, 
what he calls the amethyst pineapple, a big piece of calcite that's crowned with a pineapple-shaped chunk of calcite or amethyst. Some interesting cubic growth on top of amethyst. Another scepter. And another oddball looking scepter piece with multiple generations. And to finish it off, a celadonite included piece. Neat stuff. Here's some specimens from the Bruce Carter collection. If you all want to point out. A really cool spinel twin copper from Michigan. Right next door. A fluorite piece from India. It's got some round or hemispherical fluorite pieces along with hematite and a quartz bug. Really cool. There's a spike ball. There's a glendonite. As my young friend next to me said, a spike ball. And that's exactly what it looks like. Kind of reminds me of the Jack in a Box figure. And then working my way around, it's a really nice lapidolite on quartz. And right up above that, a really cool Kutnahorite from the Schwanning Mine in South Africa. Here we have some spherical and rounded minerals. Starting off at some cabin site, and right next door to it is a huge Clevelandite. This was from Minas Gerais in Brazil. A calcite from Cave Rock in Illinois. A really nice prenite piece. That's from Mali. This is a new one for me, gyrolite from India. Another calcite from Romania. Thompsonite from India. And right up above that, a really nice fluorite piece from India as well. And some selenite in the corner, which comes from Mexico. Some smithsonite. Nice rounded yellow atomite from Mapimi, Mexico. And a Pyrite piece, which chooses not to get in focus. Here's a clever display called Hats, Coats, and Ties. You'll see what I mean. Looking to the back, on the pink shirt, we have a Stibnite bow tie. That's from China. Right up in front of that is a quartz piece, which makes for a nice long tie, and that's from Pakistan. There's kind of a bow tie looking shape of calcite from Russia, the Kola Peninsula. Right next door, a quartz variety amethyst piece from Mexico, again making a nice bow tie. Right up above that is a quartz with chloride inclusions from Denigorsk. Another bow tie above that, another still bite piece from India. Up to the top, we have an aragonite piece. Looks like a sarandite. And still bite bow tie. Quite unusual. There's a pseudomorph case that I wanted to point out. A couple of different particular potential uh, specimens here. This one's kind of cool. It is native copper replacing halite. Very unusual shape. <laughs> and there's another one down here where it's quartz replacing halite. Here's a case with some oddballs from the Cincinnati Museum Center. Number of lab growing crystals. These ones right up front are quartz, single crystals grown in a lab. And we have some natural replacements. One up in front is a clamshell being replaced by rhodochrosite. Next to it is grotite. Up on top is pyrite after an ammonite shell. And another grotite in the back left corner, the brachiopod. Some very colorful lab-grown crystals. Pretty interesting looking, they call it dibasic ammonium phosphate, laboratory grown, it's a green thing. Then some bismuth right up next to that. And one last thing I'd show you is another fulgurite. It's a result of lightning striking sand. This one's from Michigan.